Is new comments? All right. Oh, good. I think we found some comments. All right. So we are going to get started, and I'll change with you over here. All right. So if you have any questions, you can uh, write them in the same box. The the home page. Oh, it's great to meet you too. And I hope that we will be able to give you some great information today. Thanks for your patience. Today we're going to talk about conversation English tips because I know a lot of you want to be fluent speakers and speak naturally, smoothly, right? Right. Yes. Yeah, so Dan is here today to help me explain some things and to give another perspective because I hope I have a lot of valuable information to share, but another person and hearing that dialogue together is really valuable. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we will put this over here and get started. All right. So they maybe should have the mind map, right? Yes. Yeah, so do you have the download? I gave a download, which is a mind map. Thanks for asking. It is an outline with some blanks where you can fill in any answers that we talk about. So if you want to take notes or if you want to remember what we said, but you want to listen at the same time, it might be helpful to follow the outline. So in the on the Google Plus Google Hangouts page, I gave a link, a Google Drive link where you can download the mind map. So I hope that you have been able to do that. If you have not been able to do that, if you're not able to do that, um, go to the main page for this video and you'll be able to find it. I will also send it to you. Try to figure out how to send it to you now. Let's see. All right, I will try to send this link. I think they may be stuck. <laughs> All right, downloading. Oh, there's so many questions. That's, That's why. Questions from them. <laughs> yes, yes. We don't know how to send things to you. Yes, okay. We will figure it out. Don't so worry. <laughs> let's just try to follow the outline. Yeah, yeah, and we'll follow if it. If you have the outline, try to follow with us. Yes. Yes, wonderful. Oh. All right. Are we good? Yes. All right. If you are watching, can you please mute your sound and turn off your video? That would be great. That would be great. I think. Mm, yes. Yes. All right. So First, the first things we're going to talk about, first I'm going to give you a little personal introduction so we can introduce ourselves. Some of you have already met us, some of you I've talked with on Skype, but if you haven't met us, I'm Vanessa and you are? I'm Dan. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> and this is my husband Dan and I run the website Speak English with Vanessa, so I get a chance to speak with many of you each week and make videos and have a chance to really help you learn English. And we live in the eastern US, so about 15 hours south of New York City, very far from New York, <laughs> but in the same time zone. So we live in a city called Asheville, North Carolina, and we just moved here about six months ago from Korea. And I see we have a comment from Hyosun Kim who says he is in Korea too. Hello, yeah. Korea. Go Korea. Yes, I think I see there's also some of you here from Brazil. Excellent. I think some of you from Europe. It's very late at night for you. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> From all over the world. Hello, world. Yes, yes. And some from Russia. Excellent, excellent. So, Dan, would you like to tell them anything interesting about our city? Maybe some people yes. are curious. Our city is uh, quite different from most cities around the world. It's very small. So if you're from Korea, you wouldn't see a city like this. But it is very, uh, we would say, charming. Very mm. uh, interesting city. So there are not many people. But there's uh, many things to do. We live in the mountains and by rivers. And um, 
there is a lot of local business here and everybody is very interested in living locally, we say. So going to the farmer's market or going to the local restaurant and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So I work at a local uh, coffee shop, so I am a barista mm -hmm. right now. And maybe someday I'll open up my own coffee shop. Yes. So this is what kind of what we do in Asheville. There's more, but it's an interesting little town. Yeah, there's a lot to do here. It's a small place and not many foreign travelers come here, but if you have a chance, I recommend it. We will take you to a nice restaurant. How about that? <laughs> so I, I want to tell you first some about my personal journey having difficult, frustrating, boring language classes and going from that situation, which many of you have probably experienced with English, boring classes, grammar classes, to being able to speak a foreign language fluently. So the language that I learned to speak fluently is French. And if any of you are French speakers out there, bonjour. <laughs> and when, as many of you saw in my free ebook, I talked about, I used to have Spanish classes where the teacher just talked the whole time. We just listened, and read the textbook, and that's boring, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're very boring. Just thinking about it is boring. <laughs> yeah, it's not very uh, easy to learn language for a long time in school. Yeah. Or yeah. be able to speak fluently from school, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And I'm sure you are very familiar with that situation. So in my case, I didn't really learn Spanish very well because that situation was just boring and not helpful or useful. It was pretty stressful. We had tests and the teacher would always ask us really difficult questions and it wasn't a good environment. So with French, I decided that I wanted to do it a little differently. So I went to the French teacher's office and I asked her questions just one-on-one. -on -one. And you know what, that was amazing because she was so patient with me and just told me things like, oh, if you don't understand everything, hey, it's no problem. Let's just talk together and try to say anything. And that was exactly what I needed. So I had some classes with my French teacher and then I also went to a local French group so I lived in the US, but there were a lot of French speakers in my city. So we met up together each week at a cafe. And that was great because I got to hear French and just try to speak. And I bet a lot of you would love to meet up with people who aren't going to pressure you or make you feel stressed. So we're going to talk about how to do that a little bit later. But yeah, so meeting up with the teacher helped a lot meeting up with the local group helped a lot and i think just having the the bravery the courage to be able to speak is a lot so i know a lot of you you've asked great questions here in the question and answer about how can i speak how can i feel confident and that is exactly what we're going to talk about today so let's get started yes yes so let's go to section number one if you have the mind map if you have the download the, the second section is how to speak fluently, even if you don't live in an English-speaking country. So, Dan, what do you think is the first step? What do you think is the first step to speaking fluently? Well, it's funny. It has nothing to do with speaking. It's actually listening. Aha, uh -huh, you're correct. Listening regularly. Yes. To English. So the first thing is, of course, listening. I know I talk about this a lot. So trying to listen to anything. And do you have any recommendations for things that learners can listen to? Well, I like to listen to podcasts, mm. which are radio shows on the internet. So just normal people talking, yeah. which is perfect to listen to on a regular basis. You can also watch TV shows or movies, obviously. but Sometimes the, the dialogue, the conversation is not very real. It is funny and interesting, but not, not always the most real version of conversation, mm -hmm. but still very good to sure, watch. Sure, sure. That's very useful, especially since you don't live in an English-speaking country. So there's a special rule that I want to tell you about. 
So when you're listening to TV shows, movies, podcasts, uh, I like to call it the 70% rule. So the 70% rule, it means if you can understand more than 70%, don't use subtitles. Don't use your native language subtitles. Don't use English subtitles. Try to test your listening by using no subtitles. So if you understand, if you're watching the TV show Friends, a lot of you love to listen to watch Friends. So if you're watching Friends and you understand about 70%, turn off the subtitles and try to watch it just regularly with no subtitles. That's the 70% rule. So under 70%, it's okay. It's no problem to use English subtitles. And if you don't have subtitles, it would be boring because you wouldn't understand what's happening. So mm -hmm. under 70%, don't feel bad about using subtitles. Some of my students say, oh, I'm so sorry. I used English subtitles, but it's not a big deal. It's okay. <laughs> yes, if you understand less than 70%, go ahead, use subtitles as much as possible. That's the 70% rule. So what about the second tip for how to speak fluently if you don't live in an English speaking country? What do you think? So on the mind map, on the document I gave to you, it says, mm, out loud is the second mm, step. What, out do, loud. what do you think? What do you think should be there? I believe it should be reading out loud. Oh, good. Not yes. reading in your head. Uh -huh. You have to read out loud to hear your voice, to practice pronouncing and pronunciation. Yes, yes. So the, the second step for speaking fluently first is listening, just training your ear. The second one is training your mouth muscles by reading something out loud. And of course, if you want to be a fluent speaker, try to read something natural. Don't read like CNN. It's not very natural for conversations. So try to read a dialogue, try to read a blog post, read something that's in a conversational tone. So read it out loud, a short story, a few paragraphs, an article, one of my blog posts on my website for each lesson. I have a blog post you can read and you help your ear get used to hearing your own voice speaking English. And that's really important because it will help you have more and more confidence. So the more confidence you have, the easier it will be to do step number three, which is? Speaking uh -huh. to someone else. Yes, so speaking to someone else. In okay. English, of course. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I want to learn English, so I'm going to speak Portuguese. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, so if you want to improve your speaking, first of all, listen. It's a good first step. Then read out loud, train your mouth, and the third, train your social skills by practicing speaking with someone. So this is if you feel like you are a high beginner or low intermediate, it's a good time to start speaking. If you can understand 70% of our presentation today, yes, you should start speaking with a native speaker, speak with anyone who can speak English, even if they're not a native speaker. And this is maybe the most challenging thing to do, but it is also maybe the most important thing to do, to try to, we say, put yourself out there. Mm. So try to challenge yourself and fighting, you know, really trying to go and say, I'm going to speak to somebody in English. Uh, and we have a couple tips on how to do that. Yes, yes. So we have here, there are several tips, three tips for how you can find someone to speak with. Because this idea, you're not in an English speaking country, how can you find someone? So the first tip is, I think you should go to the internet. Of course, we are here on the internet together. So there is a website I recommend. The website is meetup.com, M-E-E-T-U-P.com. And meetup.com is great for finding people anywhere around the world who are going to a cafe and you can just buy a coffee and speak English together. It's not a class, but you're just having a chance to practice together. So I recommend checking out meetup.com and 
Yeah, do you have any personal examples with meetup.com that you've used before? Um, not necessarily that I've used, but I've definitely seen you use meetup.com. Mm -hmm. right. Now, the best thing about meetup.com is it's just people coming together in a group in your local area who want to do similar things. So it's yeah. very simple, very basic. But you have to be a little brave because you have to put yourself out there. Yeah, put yourself right? out there. Do something uncomfortable. Yeah, be, it's a little uncomfortable, but once you do it, you'll feel very proud. Yes, yes. So I personally, I've used this website, meetup.com, so much. In fact, yesterday, I went to a local French meetup group. We met at a cafe. Everyone was strangers. I didn't know anyone there. And we just sat down and started talking. Hey, where are you from? How did you learn French? How long have you lived in the city? And you could do the same thing in your city. I've checked many of my students' hometowns on meetup.com and almost always there are English meetup groups in their city. So I recommend if you are really serious about improving your speaking, check out meetup.com. I don't work for their website. I just want to recommend it to you as a great in-person opportunity because language classes are okay but really you want real experiences so this is real experiences can you meet native speakers there too yes if you live in a medium-sized city almost always there's going to be native speakers there so that's important yes it's a great chance and let's go to the second tip how to find people who you can speak with so the first one is meetup.com the second one is free language exchanges online. So free language exchanges online are places where you can meet up with someone who wants to learn your native language. Now, personally, I haven't had much success with these websites because the time zone didn't work or we I came to Skype and they weren't there. <laughs> so I don't have a website recommendation for you for this, but some people have a lot of success with this. So there's a lot of language exchange websites. If you speak Korean and someone wants to learn Korean and you want to learn English, great. You can exchange your languages and it could work fine. So yes, meetup.com, language exchange websites, and the third thing. What do you think the third thing is, Dan? I would say meeting a wonderful tutor <laughs> to give you feedback and um, speak English with a native speaker would be very wise. Sure, so meeting someone one-on-one -on, -one on Skype, in person, it's so valuable to be able to have, like Dan said, feedback. Now, can you explain what is feedback? Maybe some of you know this word, maybe some don't. Yes, uh, feedback is when uh, somebody has more knowledge than you, so is uh, better at speaking English, and they can listen for your mistakes or problems or just give you any general tips and then they give you feedback. So this is what you did wrong. This is what you did right. Good job, bad job. Maybe not the bad job. <laughs> not bad job. But positive you know. attitudes. <laughs> yes, yes. So I think one of the most important things for learning English is getting personal feedback. So that could be a teacher or someone saying, hey, I understood what you said, but it's not very natural to say it like that. You should say it like this instead. And maybe some of your friends, if you have English speaking friends, maybe they don't do that with you. They just say, oh, uh huh, oh, mm, really? Oh, oh, because they don't want to stop you. It might feel uncomfortable, but it's so valuable to get feedback so that you can know where you should improve. So feedback is very important. And let's go to the next point. Yes. Yes, the next point are some of my best conversation tips. What works and what doesn't work. And from my experience learning French and my not so great experience trying to learn Spanish, I think we have some good tips for you. So number one is if you want to be a fluent native speaker, you have to listen to what? Natural, fluent conversation. Yes, just like this. Just exactly Real like this conversation. Yes, yes. So you need to listen to 
what you want to be. So if you want to be a fluent speaker, you need to listen to fluent speaking. But uh, a lot of people think, oh, I'll read some news articles or I'll, I'll read something or I'll do something else that's not exactly what you want to do in the future. So I recommend if you want to be a fluent speaker, listen to fluent English. Participate in fluent conversations like meetup.com or Skype lessons, something where you will have the chance to experience what you want to be. And there's a lot of great ways you can do this. YouTube has a lot of great videos that you can use to hear natural conversations, to learn those little tips and tricks that native speakers use, little dialogue bits. And I think that this is a great resource because it's free. And of course there is some negative sides to it because if you understand less than 70%, you're not going to be able to always have accurate subtitles. So YouTube sometimes has automatic subtitles, and unfortunately, it might be a little difficult to find accurate subtitles, so you need someone to explain or to talk about the expressions in the video. But on the mind map that I sent to you, so in the document, I sent three YouTube channels that I recommend. Now these three YouTube channels, are for native speakers, so they have very natural, fluent conversation. They have a lot of great dialogues, and these three YouTube channels on the mind map, if you didn't get it, I'll make sure I send it afterwards. In the mind map, I talked about three channels. One is Soul Pancake. In Soul Pancake's channel, they have a lot of uh, family, friendly, happy, interesting, interviews or conversations, lots of stuff going on. Yes, it's supposed to be inspiring Yes, inspiring material. ideas. Make you feel like, I'm happy to be alive. Oh, yes, kind of I can do it, I can learn English, yes. <laughs> but it has very real English. Yes, so this is one of the channels I recommend. And the second one is a BuzzFeed video. This is like pop culture kind of videos. And the final one is the Fine Brothers. So the Fine Brothers videos, they have interviews and reaction videos. So their videos are very famous for showing people reacting to, for example, a hit pop song. Like Gangnam Style. Yes, like Gangnam Style or something else. They'll show people reacting. So you'll have a chance to see natural reactions and that kind of dialogue back and forth. So these three channels I recommend for listening to natural English. All right, let's move on to the next point. The next thing is, I have three tips for you. Three tips of what my most successful students do. This is for you. Yes, for you. So you want to be a successful English learner, of course. Mm -hmm. So there are three things that my successful students do. A successful student is someone who wants to improve their English and then actually does improve. And these three things, the first one is they ask a lot of questions. They ask questions about some English video they saw, a podcast they listened to, and I don't know, why do you think it's important to ask questions? Well, if you ask questions, then that means you are curious. Mm -hmm. So you are not just thinking, give me all the information. You are thinking, hmm, what can I ask or how can I think to get better information myself? Yes, so yes. So a question puts the power in your hands. Yes, so you have the power yourself for learning English when you ask questions. So I know a lot of you here in the question and answer box have asked a lot of great questions. So great, I'm excited to answer those when we finish. And asking questions is great. And the second thing is they use English regularly. Regularly, exactly. Often. It's a habit. Yes. Maybe even every day. Yes, yes. They use At English. At least a little. Yes, as much as possible, regularly. And maybe they listen to English every day at breakfast, or they listen to a video or watch a video while they're sitting on the train. They, they reserve five minutes. 30 minutes, a short period of time that they can use to learn English. 
regularly. Mm -hmm. And I know I have some students who really feel passionate and they watch an English movie every day and listen to a podcast every day. And after one week, <laughs> they feel really tired and burnt out. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe burnt out? It just means very tired, right? So they don't want to do more work. <laughs> right, right. So they did too much and then they feel burnt out. Or maybe they feel frustrated because they worked for eight hours every day for a week and their English isn't improving. So take it slowly. Take it step by step. Take English in small, sustainable pieces. So we say bite-sized. Bite-sized chunks, yeah. Bite-sized pieces. And you need to do something that is sustainable. Don't forget to be sustainable, something that you can continue doing for a long time. Not uh, 10 hours every day. It's impossible to continue like that. So find a time period, five minutes a day. Great. Maybe 30 minutes on the weekend. You can do it every weekend. Great. Find something that you can do continually and take action, right? Action is important. Right, right. We have a saying in English called use it or lose it. Aha, uh -huh. yes. So this means you must practice English regularly or you will lose English. It will just go away in your head or it will not be effective. So right. use, use it, it or, or lose it. it. Oh, jinx. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to use it or lose it. So the final thing, number three. So the first thing that my successful students do is to ask questions. The second one is that they use English regularly. And finally, they have... Diligence. No. <laughs> that and... They have fun. They have fun. So they laugh at themselves. They're not stressed. They're not worried about improving all their English in one week. I have to do it now. No, they just have fun. They realize that Yes, it's going to take time, but don't worry. You can do it. So, for example, <laughs> one of my students said last week, uh, my favorite place in the earth is the mountains. So I said, wow, you went in the earth? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think now he'll never forget because we laughed about it. He'll never forget that he should say, wow, my favorite place on earth is the mountains mm -hmm. so because we had fun about it oh uh, he i think he'll never forget it so having fun is really important maybe even playing a game yeah playing a game in english mm -hmm. yes yes english games video games movies are fun mm -hmm. you could go to a meetup and play a board game uh -huh, in yes. english that would be very fun mm. and useful yes. so yeah keep it fun keep it fun keep it light Realize that, yes, you want to be serious about studying English, but you have to enjoy yourself too, or else you're not going to continue. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the next step. This is on the mind map. This is part four. How to improve your English even if you're really busy. I know a lot of you are very busy. Everyone's busy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the most important thing for studying English if you're really busy is what Dan said earlier. What was that expression you used? Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. And you also said the bite-sized chunks, oh, right? Oh, yes, yes. Get, practice English in bite-sized chunks. Yes. Something manageable, something sustainable. Yes, something sustainable. So using it in bite-sized chunks, small pieces. And I'm really excited because uh, the course that we made together, 30 Days of English, we did all of the hard work for you so that you can improve your English just a few minutes every day mm -hmm. while you're eating breakfast or commuting to work. It's something that you can use and you won't feel stressed about how much information you need to learn every day. So in, in this idea, you can use all three tips we're talking about today in the course. You'll learn speaking from hearing natural conversations, how to use specific expressions from conversations, and you'll get really valuable feedback. Because we said that's really important, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting feedback is so important. So having someone to tell you, hey, 
it sounds a little strange when you say that, you should say this instead. So in the course 30 Days of English that we put together for you, we will give you feedback, you'll hear conversations, you'll learn new expressions, and that's so relieving because you don't need to worry about what you should be doing. And I have a special exciting thing to share with you. Yes, because you are here, wonderful people who have asked great questions in this course, I have a special gift for you, some free things I want to offer you. So usually in our 30 Days of English course, there are, how many conversation videos are there? There's 12. Yeah, there's 12 conversation videos, 12 expression videos where you can learn 24 new expressions with us, and four quick response videos. So those are going to be speaking videos where you can answer some questions and record your voice and then send it to me. And I'll give you some of that personal feedback we were talking about. So you'll get that personalized feedback, but I have some free things I'd love to share with you. So for the next 24 hours from now, about 24 hours, I'm going to share with you for free a super English membership. So super English membership is four extra conversation videos and four expression guide downloads and then mp3s. mp3s is a new addition for the course and the mp3s are where you can download the mp3 for each video and listen to it. So if you have time to watch the video, great. But if you have just time to listen to an mp3 while you're waiting in line or while you are falling asleep or listening to my voice in your dreams, <laughs> you can listen to the mp3. So it's another addition for super English members that I want to give you for free. And usually people have to pay $15 for this edition, but it's free. Excellent. And for 24 hours. Yes, only for 24 hours. But I want to give you two more things. One of them is the audio book. So a lot of you have read my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker, but there's also a 22-minute audio book that goes with that. And the audiobook is usually $7.50, but I want to give it to you for free so you can listen to it and enjoy it. And to thank you for being on this webinar. So great, we have Super English Membership, a free ebook, audiobook download. And finally, this is the most exciting one I'm looking forward to, is free 10-minute lesson with me on Skype. <laughs> so this is exciting because usually this costs about $10 for 10 minutes, and you'll have a chance to meet with me on Skype, ask me any questions, I can give you feedback for your speaking, and you'll be able to listen and hear a native English speaker. Maybe some of you have never spoken with a native English speaker before, so it's a great chance to test it out for 10 minutes, not too long, not too short. So it'll be a good chance for a lot of you. So I am really excited to share this with you. And in the mind map, I gave you a link where you can go to that. And I'll send it again when we start answering questions. I'll start, uh, I'll give you the link so that you can join the 30 Days of English and get all of those uh, extra free things, Super English membership, audiobook and the 10 minute Skype. I would love to meet you on Skype. It would be great. Maybe if you're lucky, Dan will be there too, but we don't know. <laughs> Definitely you can meet me. And yes, so this is our special gift to you and all of the tips we've given you today, I hope were really helpful for you. I'd like to answer some questions now. Yeah, let's take a look at them. Yes, let's take a look at these questions. Here. Dan's gonna help read the questions and some of these we probably already answered during our presentation, but if there are any questions we haven't answered yet, let's give it a chance and answer them. Let's see. Awesome. Yes, would you like to read so it? So this is from Jefferson Silva. Okay. So uh, it says, I have a lot of difficult to heard English. So I think you mean I have difficulty listening and understanding. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend? Uh -huh. What would you recommend for listening and understanding English? Well, I think what we talked about, the 70% rule, that's really important because if you're listening to a native English TV show but you only understand like 70%, it's going to be difficult to get 
the 80% more. So I recommend listening to something that is closer to your level. And after this presentation, I can send you some links to websites where you can listen to conversations or you can listen to like a dialogue or short story with different levels. So maybe if you are a beginner, you can listen to beginner stories and then you can improve your English in that way. So I recommend using something that's closer to your level. Hmm. And I, I would also recommend maybe just practice, 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 <laughs> as we say. The hard so truth. <laughs> the only way you can really get better is to listen more hmm. and regularly. So I, it's very difficult, but it's start at a level you can understand most of it, but Eventually, try to keep on going and build yourself up, and then you also have to practice speaking with real people, so actually speaking yourself, yeah, too. Actually so, doing it. Great. Yeah, it's, uh, and speaking will help your listening, too, so just general practice. Yes, great question, Jefferson. Let's go to the next question. All right, we have Evaldo. Evaldo, hello. Wonderful. Evaldo, Korea. Yes, Korea, maybe. I think you're from Brazil. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What does she say? Would you like to read does her it, question? Do you think music can, could be an effective uh, for learning English or better improving? Uh -huh. Do music. you think music could be effective for learning English or better improving? Yes, definitely. I think learning sure. English is a great way to hear the rhythm and to memorize the words. Well, especially if you really enjoy it, then exactly. you will listen more and you can maybe buy or uh, find the lyrics online and mm -hmm. read the lyrics and speak the lyrics and sing the songs. Sure. Yeah. I think the sure. only negative thing about music is that sometimes the lyrics are like poetry. So maybe it's it's good grammar, but it's more poetic grammar. So that's just something to keep in mind. Hmm. Of course, yeah, maybe not conversational English, but you can certainly learn idioms or phrases. Right, right. And stuff like that. I know, I listen to a lot of French music and I love singing along with it and hearing phrases that I already know in the music. So, yes, go ahead, listen to music. Let's see, what is another great question we have? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see, we have... How do I improve my speaking? Oh, I hope that you learned some tips in this presentation already. <laughs> Oh, all right. We have a good question here from Les Lesik. 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 I hope I said your name Quiet correctly. Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski. Sounds like Kwiatkowski. <laughs> good try. <laughs> Let's see. She says. He says. Mm, I'm not sure. I think he. You think he? All right. This wonderful English learner says, I started learning whole phrases with particular words I'd like to remember. I use flashcards to remember them. What are your methods for this? So what are your methods for learning particular words and learning, you said you're learning them with the whole phrase, the whole phrase. Mm -hmm. So I think you're on the right path. The way not to learn words is just to memorize the words. There's no context, there's no idea how to put them into a sentence. So you're on the right path. I think it's a very good thing to do for beginners, especially. Flashcards. Um, you know, just to try to remember very basic or very uh, important phrases, that's very good. You're going to use important phrases all the time. But again, for fluently speaking, it, you have to really practice and do it. Sure, maybe you can read the flashcards out loud using those steps of listening, reading, speaking. So using the flashcards to be able to read. So learning the vocabulary words in whole phrases, sentences, even a story, that's better. The more context you have, the better. All right, let's see, what is another question? All right, can you continue? Let's is, see. I like this one, though. Speak, this is my afraid. Oh, all right. Let's so I think you mean you are scared of speaking. All right, we have a good question here. Marcelo Barbosa Suarez. Suarez. All right, he says, speak, this is my afraid. I think you mean to say... I am afraid of speaking. Or I'm scared of speaking. I'm scared of speaking, yes, yes. And that's very difficult. A lot of people are in the same boat. So don't worry, a lot of people feel similarly, but you know what? It's best just to try. Just mm -hmm. to try to speak, maybe to yourself. Just practice reading a book out loud and just 
use your mouth in that way. Yes. Maybe find a, a friend you like and try to speak English with him or her first. Mm -hmm. Somebody you feel comfortable with. Yeah, I think if you feel afraid to speak, follow those three steps. First, listen, then read out loud so that you get used to hearing your voice speaking and then try to speak with someone. So, mm -hmm. Marcelo, that's a wonderful question and a lot of people here wrote similar things. They feel afraid to speak. So mm -hmm. I hope that that advice is helpful for a lot of other people. Let's see what some other people have said here. All right. All right. We have... Aha! Uh -huh. Very general. Yes, many people had a similar question to you, Marcelo. I feel worried about speaking. I feel scared about speaking. How can I improve? So I hope we gave a lot of tips already about that. Let's mm, see. This is like grammar. Aha. Uh -huh. So we have Lindo Marcellus. Celestino, I hope I said that right. Celestino. Celestino says, so I think I will not get well structure the sentence. It makes me give up talking to someone. Mm. So I think you mean, I think my sentence structure isn't good. Our grammar. My grammar isn't good. And I, I give up speaking with people because mm. I feel frustrated. So basically you uh, are scared to make mistakes. Ah, uh -huh, that's an and interesting And especially point. grammar mistakes. Sure, giving up speaking with someone. And I really encourage you to try to find someone to speak with who you won't feel stressed speaking with. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's going to be someone in a meetup group from meetup.com. Maybe that's going to be online. Mm -hmm. But if you are giving up speaking with someone because you're so worried about your sentence structure, just... Try to find someone who you can speak with and you're not going to feel stressed with because we, stress is not going to help. Yeah, so we have a saying in English, take baby steps, which means try to take a small step if you want to uh, improve your grammar or structure. Don't take a big step and feel very scared, right? Maybe just take a small step. Try to listen to something regularly. Uh, maybe speak with somebody online, and again, a friend or somebody who uh, who you are more comfortable making a mistake with. Mm, baby but, steps. And you also have to remember, everybody makes mistakes. Yes, yes. I make English mistakes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I am a very good English speaker. <laughs> yes, everyone makes mistakes. All right, let's go to the next question. Oh, we have a nice comment from Marcio Luis. He says, I bet you will open your coffee shop. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, and we have another question from, oh, from Evaldo. Thank you. She says, I've been to Madison, Wisconsin once. Are there any similarities between this and your city? Oh, I'm sorry. It I'm, is warmer. Oh, it's warmer. I've never been to Madison, Wisconsin, but. <laughs> what we know about Madison, Wisconsin is it, it is very cold for much of the year. Yes, yes, it's very cold. <laughs> so let's see. We have another question here. Aha. Uh, would you like to read this question? All right, this is from Jair. Where? Jair. Neves? Jair. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we need to practice we our. We need to practice our Spanish or Portuguese. Portuguese, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I realized I understand you better than other people. Oh. I think your accent is perfect tone. Perfect to me. Oh, to me. Oh, thank you. I'd like to know where you are born. What city do you live? It sounds like. There is a perfect accent for each ear. I love you so much. Thank you. Jair from Brazil. Oh, thank you, Jair. Mm, that's very strong feelings. <laughs> so I'm glad that you can understand my accent. I hope you can understand Dan, too. We have very gen general American accents. Mm -hmm. Nothing too strong, nothing too specific. Yes. We would say um, maybe a Midwestern accent in America. Yeah, uh, like a standard... Uh, movie or news broadcast accent, nothing too strong. So I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the north. And I moved to the south when I was really young. So I don't really have a northern accent or southern accent, just from anywhere. What, what yes. about you? And I was born in LA, in California, but I was five years old when I left. So <laughs> I don't remember. California very much. Yes, yes. Uh, I would say we also probably sound very clear because we are trying to speak clear now. So there are many uh, situations where people mumble in English. So 
uh, people who speak English are very bad at taking words and <laughs> smashing them together, <laughs> so nobody understands them. So, yeah, a lot of people speak very quickly and take words and put them together, and it can be confusing, but... Right. You know, we try to make it a little easier for this these kinds of videos. Sure, having some natural conversation, but also having something that you can understand. Because, like I said, about 70%, I want you to understand at least 70% so that you can improve that 30% more. That will be really helpful. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's see if we have any other questions, and then I think it might be time for us to go. So, let's see, if you have any final questions, you can ask them in the question question box, and... There's um, one about vocabulary. Okay, we have a question about how to learn... How do you remember vocabulary? I think it is. Aha, uh -huh. all right. Amir, Amir Wadi? Yes, Wadi? Amir. Amir says, so what is the best way to remember vocabulary? Mm -hmm. Well, in my opinion, there is not one perfect way to remember vocabulary because it's going to depend your learning style, but there are definitely ways that don't work. Mm -hmm. So, like we said, I don't recommend memorizing a list, <laughs> but one of the better ways to learn vocabulary is to learn phrases or learn words in a story or in a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the course we talked about, in the 30 Days of English course, Dan and I talk about a specific topic for each video. So one topic we talk about like friendship and we use a lot of friendship words in the video like respect, a good listener, kind, gentle, same interest. We use a lot of words about that topic so that's a great way to learn vocabulary is in a context. So don't study vocabulary words in a list or you'll probably be very bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is also uh, difficult to remember vocabulary, I think, if you have too much pressure. Uh, you have to maybe feel a little more relaxed. Uh, there's not a big test you have to study for, and you're, you are studying all the vocabulary words. Ah, you know, you have to really be wanting to learn the vocabulary and having it be part of your life, part of your habit. You know, that's why we said uh, make it part of your routine and your habit. Yes. And that will be more sustainable. So, yeah, sure, if you have a list of maybe five words in one day and you want to use those words throughout the day, make a little game of it, right? So maybe you could make it more fun. So I think that's a good way to remember Sure, uh, sure, vocabulary. focus on some words. Great, mm -hmm. yes. And thank you, everyone, who wrote some, some nice comments here. We didn't get a chance to answer all of the questions, but I hope during our presentation we answered some as well. So if you have signed up for our, uh, our, our list where I sent some emails previously about this training, you will receive the replay of this video and you'll receive any updates about this. So make sure that you go there. It's uh, speakenglishwithvanessa.com slash conversation. So I hope that if you are already there, you'll be able to receive the, the special gifts at the end of our presentation for the course. And if you have any other questions, you can send them to me. So thanks so much, everyone. This was great. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry about the technical difficulties. <laughs> it's our first time using Google Hangouts. Yes, yes. Thank you for your patience at the beginning and for sticking through the whole presentation. Yes, we got a chance to talk for a long time. Hopefully you got to learn some great tips. And I'll send everyone a message, some information after this, so you can uh, review what we've talked about. And hopefully you'll be able to take action. Take action and find some way to speak, whether it's listening, reading, speaking, some way that you'll have a chance to speak. Use it or lose it. Yes, use it or lose it. So thank you for joining us, and we'll talk to you again another time. <laughs> and see you. If you want to join our course 30 Days of English, make sure you do it in 24 hours. You'll have a chance to get those special free additions together. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yes, goodbye. Bye-bye.